Now, when you have known all these important points, let's talk about making ray diagrams. To make ray diagram in case of either concave mirror or convex mirror, you will have to consider three very important rays. First of all, before talking about ray, let me make all those points important one. This is center of curvature and half of it is focus. Similarly here, this is center of curvature and half of it would be focus. So I'll, I'll be making this as a focus for the uh, convenience of diagram. Now, number ray number one is the ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis. This is the ray number one. This ray will always pass through focus. Now this is a concave mirror. So it is going to reflect ray like this. So ray will easily pass from the focus, right? This would be the focus. But in case of this, the mirror is convex in nature. So it is going to reflect in that direction. But the reflection would be such that the ray would appear to be coming from the focus. So that is how reflection takes place in ray number one. The ray which is parallel to focus, uh, parallel to principal axis will always pass through focus. Number two, second ray is the ray which is incident at optical center or the pole or the vertex. The ray which is incident at optical center will get reflected in the same angle. Like this angle I will be equal to angle of reflection R. This is followed in everywhere. Second ray, whatever angle it came through, it will get reflected from the same angle. And lastly, the ray which is incident on or which is passing through center of curvature. Suppose this is the ray passing through center of curvature, this ray, ray number, let us call ray number 3, this was ray number 2. Ray number 3 is passing through center of curvature. So this ray is going to get reflected back. It, this ray is going to retrace its position. So that is ray number 3. Here, the ray which was incident in this along uh, center of curvature, it will get reflected back. So these three rays are true for not just uh, mirrors, but only lens. The only difference is in during uh, ray diagrams of lens, the third ray, which is the uh, ray from the optical center and the reflection ray, they are taken into different considerations. So we'll discuss that when we'll be doing, in a short time, we'll be doing the ray diagrams for spherical mirrors as well, or sorry, spherical lenses as well. Now, considering just these two rays, or any two rays out of the three rays, you can make the ray diagram. For example, I'll make a similar ray diagram using just two rays. One is this, taking a concave mirror, uh, F, and 2F, it's okay to call center of curvature as 2F. Reason being, because the focus was at half of center of curvature, so even if it is radius of curvature, you can take it like that. Now, suppose my object is here, okay? Ray number one, I'm taking the parallel one, which will pass through the focus. Ray number two, I'm taking the optical center one, which will reflect at the same angle. So this is how the rays, which they are meeting at some point, that point will be the formation of image. Same is the case with convex mirror. In case of convex mirror, F to F, this is my mirror, object straight ray should be parallel to focus or should be passing through focus like that. And the second ray it will be reflected back at the same angle. So both the rays which are this ray, this and this ray, if I uh, extend them in virtual direction or opposite side, I'll get this to be the image. So see, the difference is, in this case, we got real image, whereas in this case, we got virtual image, right? So these are the points you'll have to consider to make ray diagrams. First of all, I told you about uh, this one. The ray which is coming parallel to principal axis, this will pass through focus. Ray number two, the ray which is incident at pole will get reflected at the same angle following the raw of reflection angle I equal to R. And lastly, 
the ray which is passing through center of curvature will always retrace its path that will it will be deflected back 180 degree now this is a simple diagram which i was just making that image formed by a convex mirror here they have made the uh, this ray diagram using two rays one is the parallel and the focus one which i also took whereas the second one is the ray passing through the optical center or the radius of curvature not the optical center radius of curvature that is center of curvature right so see so that ray got reflected back in my case i took the ray from uh, this optical center or the pole which reflected back and I, i still got the same position of image so it shows that doesn't matter which of the two rays you are taking take any two rays you will get your ray diagrams right so if the only thing right now matters is the position of object where object is to be cut and then accordingly there will be different positions of image so let's revise a bit for concave mirror a spherical mirror is concave if it is bent to be concave side as respect to the observer the rays are the rays are the red one is the ray which is coming parallel to the principal axis right it is passing through focus the blue one passing through the center of curvature it is reflecting back 180 degree and the uh, the last one the, there must be another ray which is okay they haven't taken that ray which is passing through the pole right but uh, we can take now position of image always depends on the position of object where it is placed right so these are the two uh, convex mirror thing convex mirror has a convex surface towards the observer and again the image is always virtual but in case of concave the image is larger upright further and the image is real inverted and smaller closer to the mirror so these are two basic difference between concave and convex mirror right image here is virtual upright upright means erect whereas in that case the image is down downwards which is called inverted right now uh there is a reason that the uh this thing concave mirror and convex mirror are also called converging mirror and diverging mirror we know that rays which are coming from infinity are coming parallel to the principal axis now all those rays which are coming parallel to principal axis are getting diverted towards focus so consider a big object which is placed at infinity the of the image will be a point image which will be forming at focus so it converged all the light rays towards focus that is why it is called converging mirror whereas this one all the rays which are coming from infinity they are also passing through a uh, focus but imaginarily right so that is also forming a point of image but in virtual a uh, virtual image but this time all the rays are diverted so this is called a divergent mirror next these are few locations where you can draw ray diagrams for concave mirror in we'll start from here in this case the object was placed i'll write the position of object the position of image and size we'll talk about these three things i'm starting from this diagram first one the object is at infinity right so infinity where will be the image forming image will be formed at focus whatever rays are coming from infinity will be parallel to principal axis and hence they will get reflected towards focus so image is at focus size is highly diminished highly diminished because the image is the point size of image right go to the next one we have brought object a bit closer towards 2f or center of curvature so that means object is placed between infinity and 2f what is 2f i'm referring to 2f as center of curvature right twice the focus so between 2f object is placed between 2f and uh, infinity and 2f this time image got shifted a bit back so image got shifted between f and 2f so f and 2f this time the size is still diminished but not highly diminished so we'll write just diminished third case when the image is that last diagram when the object is placed at center of curvature that is 2f image is also getting formed at 2f with an equal size so now you can see the pattern what we are following we are bringing object closer image is getting farther and the size is getting increased this is a simple pattern so in this case what should happen in the fourth diagram without looking at diagram if i try to write i am bringing it further so 2f to f this will get a bit back 
टू एफ टू इंफिनिटी एंड द साइज शुड इंक्रीज सो इट विल बी एन लार्ज नाउ लेट सी द डायग्राम वी ब्रॉड द ऑब्जेक्ट बिटवीन टू एफ एंड एफ इमेज गॉड शिफ्टेड फर्दर बिटवीन टू एफ एंड इंफिनिटी एंड द साइज गॉड इन लार्ज सो दिस मीन्स इन दैट केस लास्टली फिफ्थ केस दिस इज द दीज आर ऑल द मेन कनकेव मिरर डायग्राम्स फिफ्थ केस वी हैव प्लेस इट एट फोकल लेंथ so image will form at infinity because all the rays always follows the uh, the law of reversibility what is the law of reversibility of light that light if reflected 180 degree will always retrace its path so that ray which is going parallel to principal axis is passing through focus and this ray which is at uh, the pole it is going parallel it will go towards infinity which is both of them are parallel now my point was if a ray is coming parallel to principal axis from infinity will pass through focus that means if a ray is passing through focus it will go to infinity the principle of reversibility of light so in that case when object is placed at focus image is getting formed at infinity and what would be the size size how do we make size of an image these two rays are meeting here that means this is the size suppose these two rays would have met here size would have this much long right so the size depends on where the rays are actually meeting up in that case both the rays are tending towards infinity that means they are not going to meet so size would be highly enlarged so these are all the ray formations or image formations for concave mirror the only thing is every time the image which has been formed is what real and inverted why real, real image okay let's talk about difference between real and virtual image what is real image real images are those images which can be actually obtained on a screen whereas virtual images could not be obtained on a screen for example in the ray diagram 1 2 3 4 and 5 wherever there is a position of image place some screen any type of screen at the position of image you will find the image formed on the screen so you got the image on the screen that means it was real when we stand in front of plane mirror when we go out of our home we get ready and when we see our reflection in mirror plane mirror we are talking about which is placed at our, or which is hanging in our home the image is getting formed behind the mirror so just remove the mirror and try to place something behind the mirror even if it is a screen you won't find any image on that screen because that is a virtual image so that is the major difference that real image can be obtained on a screen virtual image could not be so these are all real plus they are all inverted because real image is always inverted that is a very key point the last ray diagram shows we have brought the object from infinity to focus what if i further place it closer to the mirror that means it is a place between focus to pole this time image position depends it depends how close it is placed to pole so i am not writing it down the closer you will uh, keep it from the pole it will be more farther away plus in any how it has to be a virtual image because the ray diagram is something like this this was our object this ray has to pass through focus and second ray has to uh, reflect back at equal angle so when i'll extend both of these rays i'll get image on the opposite side that means virtual image and it will always be enlarged right it will be always greater than the size of the image but the position will depend on how closer it is placed with respect to pole right so the height or the magnification or the size would be enlarged definitely but position we are not sure about position will depend where or how close the object has been placed so i hope this has all cleared your ray diagram concepts and doubts let's see what else we can talk about this is a use we have been studying about convex and concave mirror from quite a while now now where do we use convex mirror and concave mirror this is a proper use of convex mirror it is used at the curvature of roads where the next road is not visible for example i am taking a turn like this hope it is okay to remove this you might have noted it down and if you haven't yet go back to the video pause the video and note it down keep writing your notes side by side while you will viewing this lecture because making your own notes is very important 
it helps us to helps you to score very well now suppose the road is like this okay there is a tall building or anything and the road behind that road goes this way the road behind the building goes like this way so if i'm driving from this side i'm going towards that side i won't be able to see whatever vehicle is coming from this side right that is why to avoid any mishappenings or collisions a convex mirror like that is placed here a very broad big convex mirror reason is due to its broader point of view or broader view you can easily see whatever vehicle is coming from this side and the same goes for this vehicle so both the drivers can see each other and they can uh, avoid a collision this is a good use of convex mirror then we'll talk about where do we use concave mirror everybody have seen torches so torch is made like what it is made up of a small bulb but bulb doesn't give away all the light the light is reflected in front suppose this is the bulb which is going to glow in the torch this whole light is reflected in front by concave mirror and the same principle is used in the headlights of our car where the light is reflected by using concave mirror see this this is a concave mirror thing though it will look a bit parabolic now you guys are uh, more educational enough to know why it looks parabolic not properly concave there is a reason see we know that rays which are coming from infinity what we are discussing right now is this is a use of concave mirror but it is not looking concave to us it is looking parabolic to us we are discussing the same thing why parabolic is taken instead of concave though from the beginning of time when the vehicles were starting uh, getting started to be used we started using concave mirror only but later on we shifted to parabolic mirror there is a reason point is we know that the rays which is coming from infinity will get reflected towards focus right that means if the bulb is placed at the focus whatever rays are getting from it will reach towards infinity so this is what we wanted from the this whole uh, system or this whole setup that we place the bulb at the focus of the mirror and it will reflect all the light in front right because this will these rays will go towards infinity the problem is that this doesn't happen why there is a there is a small defect in mirrors as well as lens called spherical aberration now what is spherical aberration suppose this is our concave mirror i am making two type of rays one is these rays and one are these rays these rays are classified or they are termed as paraxial rays and marginal rays paraxial rays are those rays which are very close to the axis or principal axis whereas marginal rays are those rays which are very close to the margin of the <coughs> excuse me margin of the mirror now what happens according to theory what should happen is these rays should meet at focus right but what actually happens is these rays do not meet at focus they meet at a small distance apart this defect is called spherical aberration that is the paraxial rays and marginal rays do not meet at focus they meet at different points that is why and this defect is not present in case of parabola because in parabola there is a single this focus whatever light which is coming parallel they will all meet at perfect focus so instead of taking a concave mirror if we take a parabolic mirror it will do the job